welcome to Three Mums Podcast, hosted by Natalie, Anthea, and Charlene. This is a space where you'll get nothing but real conversation. This is your moment to pause, have a laugh, get involved, and come on our journey. Open, honest, and free always. Hashtag the Three Mums way. is the end of season one. Ah, that's exciting. Episode number six. Um, my name is exciting girls, isn't it? Not girls, ladies. Uh, my name is Charlene and yeah, we're going to kick back off today and I'm going to be handing back to Natalie, who's going to be kind of sharing a personal experience with you guys and we're all going to chime in. It's going to be great. How are you all doing anyway, though? You okay? Yeah, yeah. I'm good. I'm good. And how's your been so far, guys? It's been, for me, it's been, um, yeah, it's been all right, to be fair. It's been all right. Just getting back into the, the mode of school run and, you know, everything else. It's just, it's fine. It's fine. And this is an addition, a good addition to mm-hmm. what is going to be a very, I guess, jam-packed, but then... Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a necessity. So yeah, making the time, not even making the time because I can't make time, finding the time to to get this got done and yeah, it's good. It's good. What about you, Shaz? I'm feeling good. Um, I just recently, you know, when you guys hear this, my music would have been well out, but I released my second single of the year last year. So I'm just, it's just really good ladies to get stuck back in and work again mm-hmm. and yeah, Talia is eight and a half months. Yes, eight and a half months. My mind went blank. Um, and it's just been nice, to, as much as I love being with her, it's just been nice to just do some stuff that's just baby free. And this is a massive part of that. So how to also highlight, for those who are watching on YouTube, we did not plan this coordination. This keeps no. happening. <laughs> like, Abby, I saw your outfit and I was just like, oh my days. And that's... <laughs> Oh, no, we, we do not talk. We do. I think the only episode <laughs> we did think about what we was going to wear was our first one. After that, it's like, guys, look, I'm putting on whatever. And literally, yeah. we come on the screen and we're like, but well, are you guys serious? Like, how are we, <laughs> how are we matching? So that's just the thing in it. It's that sister bit. So, anyway, I'm going to kick off today, guys. You know what? I'm not going to lie. Up until right at this moment, I'm still like, what am I really going to talk about? When you talk about the fact of sharing a part of your journey, 38 years old. There's so many moments in life that make up the version of Natalie that you guys know today. But um, I think the topic I've, I want to discuss with you guys is on the notion or question of, is it real love if it's formed out of codependence? I think that's, that's that if there was to be a topic, wow. it's, the question is, is it true love or real love if it's formed out of codependence? Um, so to give context to that title, and this is not in relation to my current husband at all. So just to put that disclaimer out, it is 100% true love. But um, like we've mentioned before in previous podcasts, we're church girls. We grew, grew up in the church. You know, there are certain areas that I 100% believe we were not equipped for or prepared for. They just weren't discussed. It's just something yeah. we didn't have open dialogue in church or even with our parents or with older family members, whatever it may be. But um, I had an amazing relationship with my father and I'll put this disclaimer out as well. I'm actually going to say, guys, that these episodes are going to share elements of truth that have created who Natalie, myself, Anthea and Charlene are. And it's our truth. So if you hear us mention names, if you hear us even mention certain scenarios or periods in our life, it's not to put a shame or a negative um, overtone upon that person. It's just us reliving our truth from those moments. And that's, you know, that's just to put that out there. I know that there's people that's going to listen that might want to clutch onto one little negative thing we've we've raised. Remember that we're, we're also telling you something that happened in the past. It means it doesn't define our current present or our future. And then we might share stuff that defines our present, but we're also working through it and living it. But it's our truth. And that's what this space is about. So yeah, I had an amazing relationship with my, my dad up until like 12. Um, I was I would say the child that was the academic one. So extremely sporty, but 
you know, when it came to education, I just got it. Things just made sense. I, you know, I, it just made sense. Schoolwork was not hard for me. I loved school. I was an overachiever. Um, but I was very much raised with tough love is the word. If, if I'm going to categorise it, tough love. I never received praise for all those achievements. It was always like, that's what you're meant to do. That's how it should be. Do you understand and how I mean? can you do better? And, and it was, and I could have got an A and the next question would be, well, next time you need to get an A star. So just to put context into that, you know, and um, I remember hitting like 13 years old, it was year eight in school. And once again, I'd started secondary school my first year, which is absolutely amazing. And hitting year eight and um, yeah, just not really caring that much anymore. I, you know, just wanted to have a bit of fun. I think that's what, you know, my peers were joking about. And I just wanted to have fun. Like, and I remember going, and I remember this particular teacher who, my science teacher, and I mean, I would step into the classroom and before I might, like, literally my foot through the door, but I'm um, going to the back and he'd pull, call me to right to the front to sit at the front. And I just was, I remember going to parents even and telling my mum and dad she's picking on me, you know, and I just say, <laughs> well, come sit, like, when it comes to there being an issue with a school or a teacher or anybody, when I tell you my dad will fight hard, like when it Big comes up, to the situation, as much as my mum, yeah, as much as my mum um, always supported us when it came to those scenarios, you're getting daddy down at school, like my, you know, so I'm like, you need to speak to his teacher. He picks on me every time I go into the classroom, you know, he's instantly on me, like, I just felt like I couldn't breathe in this, in this person's class. And um, I remember going in a class and like, you know, if you're watching on YouTube, you're going to see me now. Like, and I remember like sitting there, like, get me watching, you know, you, you watch you, like, what, you know, as my dad's about to, my dad's about to ask him what's going on. Because my daughter's expressing that you're picking on her, I don't like what I'm hearing. And the teacher, bold face, turned around and he's like, well, I am. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> and he's like, I do pick on her your daughter frustrates me so much because she's so intelligent and she's such a, you know, a, 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 an amazing student and she just wasted her life. She's playing about with these kids. At, and in that moment, no, I you could have drunk, <laughs> I could have drunk so small. But I'm raising this because as a result of that, I ended up getting on my first issue, first time ever being like grounded. But this grounding went on for time. It now just became like every bit of my existence was a reason to ground me. And I remember like it started off like two weeks to a month. And eventually, I'm not going to lie, it was like nearly six months I was grounded. And there's so many other reasons that contribute to that, that I wouldn't say I contributed to. But the point I'm trying to make is, is that planted a seed. Because what I couldn't grasp was all these years, I'd done amazingly well. Like, and never got mm. praise for it. it was never, I never got a well done. I never got a... And then, and I need to put even more context. When I say I wasn't doing well in school, we're talking C's. Like, we're, we're talking C's. When, so I wasn't getting A's, I wasn't getting B's. It was at a C level. It wasn't, you know, we're not talking E's mm. and F's and unclassified. <laughs> like, so let's get this into context. And there was no sort of moment of reasoning with me to try and understand where I was at. Bearing in mind, puberty, adolescence, there's so many other things that come into context, but those discussions were not had with me. Um, and yeah, I think from there on out, our relationship became strained, very, very strained. Like, you know, I, if my dad was in the room, I'm not going in the room. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I'll wait till he leaves. And, and this just progressively got worse over the years. I remember starting college now. Um, and once again, you're forming your own identity. I remember like knowing that when I went to college, I wanted my short haircut. I cut my hair from environment school, from secondary school. I knew I wore glasses. I knew I wanted contact lenses. Like, you know, and I remember working all summer, getting a job and working all summer that I could get my contact lenses get the clothes I wanted to wear for college I had this identity I wanted of myself and it's so deep that this guy was the first person to ever approach me I remember going to like is that the induction or something and seeing a girl I used to go to school with and this guy was like introduced introduced not my type in any way shape or form <laughs> but flat just, no, I mean, no, I'm not going to lie to you. He was crazy mosh, not my type. I do statement, understatement. Yeah, like not everyone in the room needs to know the brand of clothing you're wearing. That's just not my style in that sense. You know, even his hairstyle, just it, he was not my type. I need to express this in every way, <laughs> in every way, you know, context. Like, and um, he, um, 
but it was flattering it was nice it was just like okay and then I remember like kind of making it clear I wasn't really interested and he just backed off and literally for a year we just spoke every now and then on the phone do you know what I mean like loads of guys I got to know and whatever else in college and you know I would like to say I was very popular but and it's just weird like obviously as that time progressed we're just talking every now and then on the phone like I said home life was more strained and um I remember it was so weird. I remember with my, my good friends at the time in college and he must have been talking to somebody and I must have made a comment like, and she was just like, why do you care? Do you get what I mean? And I was like, I, I, I don't. Like, and she was like, do you like him? And I was like, no. Like, you know, but whatever. Anyway, started to talk to him a bit more and eventually like a couple would say it was like, yeah. Started going out with each other. But even then it was joke. It was... It, it wasn't nothing serious in my mind. And fast forward to about maybe five months later, I'm, I, I'll never forget, I was actually at my cousin's house and she happened to be talking about my current husband, who I was always still good friends with, and he was seeing a girl at that time. And once again, she made a comment about their relationship or something, and I was like, yeah, if you think it's nice, then whatever. And she was like, why are you responding like that? And I was like, I'm not responding any old way and she's like you know don't you approve and I was like he can you know Anthony can go out with whoever he wants to go out with but and it's so random her answer me like could you see yourself marrying the guy that you're with bearing in mind I'm only 18 years old at this time and I was like this is going to sound so weird but like as young as this relationship is it's only five months in I know my dad doesn't like him and even though I'm not close to my dad I couldn't mm. see myself marrying a man I don't, uh, that he doesn't approve of, but, and it's like, she was like, so why, you know, we, oh, there was loads of other things she discussed, but she was like, why are you with him? And I was like, I don't know, I love him, in it? Do you get what I mean? But at that exact moment, I felt like I should have come out of this relationship, but I didn't. And the root of that was, his home had become a safe haven for me. Like, you know, I don't wow. know if you guys can relate in any of your relationship, but it became a safe place, but it was somewhere to go. I, his mum was so loving and warm. Like, I felt valued. I felt, you know, like my presence was, was important. And I didn't feel that way at home. And I didn't get that at that season of my life at home. And fast forward, you know, going to quickly skip through this story. But at, the irony is that later on in that year, he then, so by September, he then told me he had cheated and got another girl pregnant. And this is where I, you know, we, you know, we've said it before, we're church girls, the heart of who we are, you know, is, is Jesus. And I, I remember asking him when she got pregnant and it happened to be in the month of April at that exact same time that my cousin had asked me why I'm with him. And, and in my mind, I felt mm. to come out of a relationship, but I talked myself out of it yeah, because he'd never done anything to me. There was no reason to come out of the relationship. Mm -hmm. But now I look back, there was a, there was a, there was some, there was, that was, I guess, Holy Spirit kind of trying to get me out. There was no need for you to even go down this road of pain you're about to embark on. But I couldn't leave it because it also fed a whole need within myself. And I would not say I was a, a young person with low self-esteem or needy would have ever even put myself in the category of someone who was codependent mm -hmm. and I still ask myself to this day was that real love because the pain like that ripped through my heart and my soul when I found out this man cheated like and it I'll never forget like he told me the day he picked me up from work and then I remember crying all night and I remember coming home and crying and my mum and my sister asked me what's going on and my dad's coming home and kind of hearing the crying in the room and coming and saying, you know, to my mum, what's she crying for? And my mum said, oh, he's cheated. And my dad just looked at me and just left the room, didn't say anything. And it was like, that was like the exact moment that I needed that fatherly hug. Like, I'm actually going to get emotional, which is so deep. Wow. Oh, God. And it's, it's, it's amazing because as I, do you know what I did the next day? I called this guy. And when I met him, even though he's hurt me more than anybody has ever hurt me in my life, but why in his time, all the time I'm like, why did I go? But the root of that love was that codependence. Like, it, it, you know, I, and it took me nearly a wow. year to come out of that um, 
wow, come out of that relationship, but still craving what I really, really was from my dad. And knowing mm. that I never actually ever done, and not knowing how I got here. No, I wasn't that chick. Like, I don't know how to express this anymore. Like, I weren't that girl that, do you know what I mean? Guys could take them, you know, I don't know how to, and I'm not, I don't, how to, I don't want to word this to offend any woman listening, but I wasn't gullible. I wasn't easy to pull the wool, like, you know, that I was very, very strong in who I was. I knew who I was, you know, and I found myself in this relationship and there's multiple things that, no, I'm not willing to share at this present moment that, took place in that relationship but yeah like the pain I felt at such a young age I it was not necessary but it was as a result where you know I wasn't being affirmed in certain areas at a very key stage in my my life and my development as a teenager so yeah I just I, the question I'm asking even myself is was it real love can it ever be real love if it was formed out of codependence and what's wow. you guys opinions on that subject you know what I mean can you relate to it have you ever experienced it you know it's mad but I do look back now and I'm like I still would say it was love but it never would have gone that far and I don't think I would have ever struggled to break away the way that I did if the love was being felt in the, actually the area I really craved it most which was from my father at that time which I would like to add now <laughs> I have a fantastically amazing relationship with and we've repaired all of those things and that was around the age of 21 but that's part of my story that's part and, and and that moment shapes how I love my children you know that that moment shapes how I care for them that moment shapes the discussions I have with them because I never ever want them to ever feel the pain I felt in that season I get that they're going to make choices that I can't control but I never want it to be from a lack of what they're not getting at home so yeah what, what's what's you guys opinion can I just that? can I just tag at the end of that so it's so deep because this is just real you know for those who follow us on Instagram, we get loads of comments when we post our parents <laughs> and our family and, you know, no family is perfect. And no. um, it's just amazing looking back now because daddy's just so great. But mm. no, it, I actually saw a meme once and it said like, isn't it funny how when you get older, you just realise how much your parents weren't perfect and they were figuring mm -hmm. stuff out and mm -hmm. they didn't have all the answers. Just like, you know, we don't have all the answers, but, you know, you look at your parents and you kind of put them, I certainly did, but it's like Petrus. your parents are people just like us. Now we're adults, we have children and we're navigating stuff. And, it, you know, it's just, it's just beautiful to look back and be like, see the growth and no one's perfect. And it's, yeah. Yeah. What about I, you, Ram? Yeah, I would, yes, there's definitely similarities in terms of um, what you've spoken about, Nat. So I think for me, when I reflect on my relationship with my um, father, it was, it was, I would, I would say I had, I, I have, and I had a really good relationship with him, but similar to you, I can now say probably late much later on in life that maybe I needed a little bit of guidance in terms of that father-daughter conversation you know as to you know guiding me in making certain choices of the type of man the type of, of time I guess type of boyfriend and I just and I don't ever recall having that type of father-daughter conversation and I'm not sitting here trying to pin blame on any anybody mm. I mean what I saw within my own household was a uh, mother father marriage married from quite a young age you know um my dad very very much devoted to the church my mum you know walking alongside him but yet she had you know the children the home and yes it, I would say there was there was a good balance there between them but then in terms of like as Nat said just certain affirmations about you know choices for when you become an adult and certain things and even in adolescent stage when you're you're still finding yourself you're still forming you're still growing I don't recall yeah I I, I don't recall I didn't have it and it has made me reflect and think could that be, you know, the reason or one of the reasons as to why I've made such poor choices, you know? Yeah. And 
because like with my mum and my dad, he literally was my mum and my dad, and there was there's there's no in between. They haven't like mm. had multiple relationships. Well, that's what they've told me anyway. <laughs> 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 sorry, mum. Sorry, dad. But no, on, on the serious note, they didn't have multiple relationships, and I remember just yeah being young and going like I do not want a boyfriend I do not want this because I wanted to stay wholesome I wanted to just guard my heart I wanted to be I didn't want the exposure of even experiencing any kind of heartbreak so for the long time I was like anti-boys I just I wasn't interested at school when all the girls were like oh you've got a boyfriend I was like no not interested you know I just I just wanted to protect myself and I think it's because I wasn't educated I didn't have the 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 nuggets of wisdom on to how to as you have said navigate through, through certain mm-hmm. situations so I I feel that um yeah if maybe in hindsight I don't know if I had had that guidance or if it was there, even there to give in the first place I don't know because I guess sometimes there's certain things in within our culture that is passed down through generation and generation. Maybe it's just that my dad didn't know how to, or even my mum didn't know how to. So I can't blame them. And one thing I will say is that they've always given me free scope to make my own choices. And in making my own choices, I then have to own them if I've made the wrong choice. So I, I think that's the only thing that I can say and that's that I can relate to that, yeah, if there was that little bit of guidance, maybe, maybe, you know, things could have turned out a little bit or slightly differently mm. for me. But at the end of the day, like I said, I own, I own my choices, I've owned my yeah. path and yeah, it's who I am now and I'm not ashamed of that. Can I just say, um, say, sorry, sorry, no, no, because I'm going to change the subject. You go ahead. I was just going to say, so would you say in any of those earlier relationships in the same scenario, you could have said that it could have been formed out of codependence because of a lack or what Jen Summer was saying to you, would you say, would you say you've been in love multiple times? Do you get what I'm trying to say to you? Like, I would still say only twice, my husband's and this one other person. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Like, but yeah, as young as I was, I'd still look back and say, yeah, but it wasn't healthy in any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. If, if anything, in most of my relationships, I've got to be careful here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> actually, I know that. Yeah, that's they're more the focused on me. No, they're more focused on me. So mm. I'm the one that, yeah, that's, there's your answer. Okay. Right? They're yeah. focused on me. Interesting. So whatever, done it in some sense. Right, yeah. So for whatever reasons that they, they've um, experienced lack within their own lives, it's very much been that they've latched onto me and I mm. really have has to wow. be the nurturer, the encourager, you know, and sometimes it, it's left me empty because I've given, 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 and there's literally nothing left. And it's, it's I guess it's in somewhat similar to what um, we spoke about the other week about, you know, being in a relationship where one person is active and one person is, yeah. is passive. It just seems to be... a, a I don't know something that follows follows through with me for for most of my relationship. That I just I I don't know why it's like that, but mm. that's yeah. That would be my answer. That it's probably so there is still there is maybe something there to still look into. Then um, yeah. you know I mean like because you're on the other side of it. If that makes whereas like I said, I was still very independent, but. I know that the root of that is that I don't want to be at home. So it, it got deeper than it ever mm. it never would have gone. It never would have gone there. I just wasn't that girl. Like I remember like like even I was doing my driving. Like I was one of the first. I got my driving, um, my what's the word? License. Um, provisional got my provisional at 17 handed to me on my 17th birthday so I started driving within like two weeks of turning 17 and went to part went to go for my test by my 18th birthday I remember and um failed and then did it a second time and failed and it broke me like I can't even describe to you like it was just felt like another thing I was failing at 
But I remember this guy, he passed his test. And then I just stopped driving. Didn't care. So it was like, well, I'm with you all the time, so I don't need to drive. So I didn't care to drive. And then the moment we broke up, I was like, oh, how am I, how am I getting about? I, I, need, I need to, like, something as small as that, I parked because I was with this guy and I was with him all the time. Mm-hmm. So I didn't need to worry about my driving anymore. Like, that's, I now look back and realise there was such a level of dependency in that mm-hmm. area. And that is not you I mean, now. That is not me. That is, where did that come from? You know, when, I, when we broke up, I remember, like, literally having, like, two months to pass my testing before my theory was going to run out, my theory, which is the online thing or whatever, yeah. And um, failing again, like, and then, you know, overstrippedness, and then it hit this, I remember um, booking it, and it was like two days before it was about to run out again. And I, I drove terribly. I drove because I had all this pressure on myself to just feel like I was achieving in something I wasn't I just felt like a failure at that season in my life like and I remember like it was a black guy and he just turned to me and was like you need to brush up on this you need to brush up on this but I'm passing you man and I was like, like and I literally had tears in my eyes just like thank you like you know like and he's like you can do it man and it was like the, that was the seeds in the beginning of starting to find me again even though I was only 19 years old you know like but those moments like play such an integral part in even who I am today how I navigate my conversations with my son but I'm aware that we're about to hit that next season of his life like um yeah it's it's, it's interesting it's interesting but sis you was going to say something what did you want to say Gosh, what was I going to say I was just going to say like I don't necessarily have experience mm-hmm. in that but I just guess all of this just makes me think about just how important your parents are because for me mm-hmm. You know, the same man, for those who maybe have just listened today, m- m- me and Nats have the same parents. We are actually blood sisters. And when I was thinking about, you know, wanting to be with someone, I instantly was looking for somebody like my dad and, you know, somebody that had traits like my dad. And I can see some so many similarities in Chris that were in my father, you know, really servant hearted, loved to help people really look after me. You know, I would watch my dad drop people home all the time, drive here, there and everywhere, serving people. And, you know, Chris, Chris and I uh, lived, Chris lived in Luton. I lived in London when we were, you know, dating and he would literally drop me home. I'm just giving examples of how much similarities I would see in Chris and you know in my dad even with Talia now just kind of watching their bond you know I guess maybe if some people think you know I want my daughter to be I want her to be a mummy's girl or daddy's girl whatever however that turns out I want my husband to be the apple of her eye because I want her to know that she gets that love first and I'm not saying we never had that love now from daddy Mm. that's not the point but it's just highlights how much kids we they need their dads they need their moms and it's like even in that moment that when you were saying when he broke your heart you just needed a hug from your daddy you just needed daddy to say it's okay yeah and it's it's interesting you raising that because um as we said we're sisters but I was the first one and I would say this till the beginning of time I was the guinea pig I was the guinea pig in every one of these stages and actually my dad took a very different approach with my sister he did he didn't, I should talk, really say to that. <laughs> yeah, he didn't talk to me about boys like in all honesty unfortunately he found out about this boyfriend as a result of me having a situation in my college and I remember going on the bus with him to college he was coming down to have a meeting over this situation and in my mind knowing it's gonna come out today it's gonna come out you need to say something like and the words would not leave my mouth I could not tell my dad like because because of how strange this bond was was of ours I could not tell him I had a boyfriend and I never forget like being in this meeting and you know like this head of year or whatever was like so you know Natalie the young man that like, came to your defense I believe he's, he's your boyfriend and and I just remember my dad turning, and you know, like Superman when he had like, the red eyes, like that's what it felt like, like the, the, the beat yeah, of yes. And I didn't even turn, I was like, yes. Like, so, and I, I never forget, like when we left him, you know, my dad was very strict when we was young, and I remember him just saying to me, it's cool to when you get home. Like, and just, you know, the whole day you can't function because you just know you're going to get it when you get in. And I remember when we finally spoke and it was like, how do you think that made me feel as a dad to hear that information? I was like, but you're not seeing the other side of the coin. Like it's because of how you are with me. What I could not tell you. And he just kind of pins it up on just being disrespectful. And it was not, 
me trying to just use, I just, those words would not leave my mouth. And then I'd never forget my sister starting college. And I, I remember being upstairs and hearing my dad call her randomly one day. He's like, it's what I should have any guys like you at college? And he, what is this? So even though he hasn't acknowledged those pitfalls or those little mistakes of me, he definitely took a different route of openness and, you know, with Charlene being the younger one. And that I think still helped to shape her latter years as a teenager, do you understand what I mean? And so it, it, it's different. And like I said, I take note in all of these areas as to how I raise my children and and the impact. I, you know, we can't control every narrative. I, I would love that when they're older, it's like my mum was the best mum in the world. And you know what I mean? Like we can't control that, but I'd like to believe that I'm doing my best to create a, a holistic, you know, mm-hmm. um, element to their their nurturing their care their advice my how strict I am like in everything do you understand what I mean but I want ultimately that they know that home is a safe place mommy's a safe place daddy's a safe place and there's nothing we can't talk about you know and I need them to be affirmed from the home first um and not and not have to look for it elsewhere even though I wasn't looking I did not look for it but just found myself in a situation so just yeah. to tag on that now it is mad because yeah I remember when I was going out with you know who things like yeah. in, in college and I know like looking back now my dad did not like him I remember when we were going to the prom and we went to my dad picked him up to take us to the prom and like, this particular person who I was going out with his mum was lovely and his mum really loved me and she wanted to meet my dad and my dad was like no I'm not meeting anyone today I was like daddy but she's she's there she wants to meet you but I was like I'm gonna get out of the car let's just go just tell t- tell tell him to come in the car so I can drop you like you know that that protectiveness and now I'm a parent I get it like he did not want me to be that person but he definitely took a different route, a different, a different yeah. you know, method with me. Like he didn't, he, I felt okay to tell him and he knew I was at the first, you know, I would go visit him, I'd hang out at his house. Mm-hmm. And no, when I think about how strict my dad was, he really softened, but that didn't last. That was a silly relationship. We didn't need anything. But yeah, he definitely learned from you, Nats, your experiences and how he dealt with you. But just all good. Oh gosh, that was, a, that was an interesting one, boy. <laughs> Dissy, you're the first one to cry on the Free Bones podcast. Um, yeah, clearly. It, it was in my eyes. I got wet. I didn't actually cry. My eyes just got a bit wet. <laughs> a little bit emo. <laughs> just a bit. Just a tad bit emo. A little bit emo. But, you know what? It's hard. It's, yeah, it's, these are what shaped me. And it's like, yeah, I love my dad to pieces. But yeah, that, that season of my life is very, very, very... And it went on. Do you know what I mean? It, it shapes it very much has helped to form the version of Natalie that you know now. How I love, yeah. how I support, how I engage, like, yeah, it's, it's you know, and it also helped me even more so in how I chose a husband, how I, you know, there's lots of elements that shape that. Um, had to look at what was it I was paying attention to? What was I attracted to, you know, and why was I attracted, you know? But um, I would have preferred not to go through it personally. If I could look back, I would have preferred my teenage years to be a lot lighter and a lot less stress-free. But I think I grew up a lot faster as a result of that. Um, yeah, it's crazy. But my eyes just got wet. That was Listen, Natalie, your eyes got wet. Your eyes got wet and watery. But you know what? Why are we calling this open, honest and free if we're not going to be open, honest and free? Let the tears flow. And for anybody who's listening, you know, diving into the past and doing soul searching is uncomfortable and it is, you know, it makes you feel vulnerable. But I think the reward from it is so great because you can pinpoint certain things. You can think, oh, that's why this happened, etc., etc. So I encourage you ladies to do some soul searching of your own. Thank you so much for listening today to the Three Mums podcast. If you, ladies, do you have anything else you want to say? No, I think like I, I, at the, the beginning, I started with the question, is it true love if it's formed out of codependence? And I think the answer to that is it can be, but it's not healthy. And it most of, you know, doesn't mean that it can't last, but it's not built on a firm foundation. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Make sure you follow us on all of our social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at 3Mums. Except for Instagram, which is 3 underscore mums. 
and make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. I have so many questions.